Good evening. Thank you all for coming. Our thanks go to the Historical Museum for hosting us, to Book TV for recording this presentation, and especially to Maggie Richards and Maggie Savant at Henry Holt Publishing for arranging this return visit by Tony Horwitz. Midnight Rising, John Brown, and the raid that sparked the Civil War evokes a familiar image for Kansans, the larger-than-life abolitionist that adorns the walls of our state capital in Topeka. Brown, in his mid-50s, waged a bloody renegade war to end slavery that started in the Kansas Territory and ended when Brown was captured after his famous raid on Harper's Ferry. Relying on his self-proclaimed archive of the feet, Tony Horowitz walked the path to Harper's Ferry at the same time, late evening, and on the same date, October 16th, as Brown and his band of men did, did the night of the raid. Horowitz relied on written archives to write about a sharply divided country and the fiery incidents leading up to the Civil War. With eerie contemporary parallels, Midnight Rising confirms that history does repeat itself, but questions whether ways justify means. Please help me welcome back to Wichita, Tony Horowitz. So, uh, thanks for that kind introduction and in Historical Museum and Watermark Books. It's great to be back in Wichita. Uh, on my way here, I realize this is my second consecutive book with a strong Kansas connection. Um, I don't know what that means, but I seem to be uh, drawn to your state or at least the darker chapters of your uh, <laughs> history. Um, I'm going to try and be reasonably brief tonight and leave lots of time for questions because uh, this is a topic that tends to uh, arouse uh, strong feelings um, and I like to hear those and have some discussions. So please uh, don't be uh, uh, shy when I'm done. Um, maybe if we can dim the lights a little bit for the uh, pictures. Anyone near a... a great. Yeah, I brought some pictures for your entertainment. Um, I have to say first that I, I had a lot of fun uh, writing uh, Midnight Rising. And uh, one reason for that is that I got to spend a lot of time in Harper's Ferry, uh, which is really uh, my kind of town. It's this uh, very picturesque, uh, history-haunted place uh, where strange things still happen. Um, on my first uh, research trip there, I was on my way to the archives and a uh, Park Ranger told me there was a John Brown beard growing contest going on up the street. Um, not a uh, fast paced uh, spectator sport, uh, but still um, intriguing. Uh, Harper's Ferry has also been uh, a, really a tourist trap uh, almost from the day of Brown's raid, uh, as I discovered in my research. Uh, and there are still sites uh, such as the John Brown Wax Museum, uh, which you can see on your left. Uh, where you can learn all kinds of uh, history that never happened. Um, I also uh, had fun with Midnight Rising because uh, the protagonist of this story, John Brown, is such a vivid and compelling figure, and I think quite different from the way uh, uh, most Americans imagine him. Uh, in art and lore, uh, he's often depicted as this uh, wild-eyed, wild-haired fanatic uh, possibly uh, insane, uh, a sort of self-appointed messiah, uh, as he appears here in this uh, famous mural from the Kansas uh, State House with a uh, rifle in one hand and a Bible in the other. Uh, I learned this morning that when Kansas uh, won the national championship in football a few years ago, that uh, fans unfurled a, 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 a banner with this image, except that in place of the Bible, uh, Brown was clutching a, a trophy. Um, <laughs> Oh, it's basketball. Excuse me. Okay. Uh, I, oh, my gosh. Uh, don't run me out of the state. Um, anyway, these kinds of images, though, aren't really uh, true to the man, uh, beginning with that beard. Um, uh, for most of uh, his life, uh, Brown was a well-groomed American striver and family man who favored uh, starched white shirts and leather cravats and dark suits uh, and made business trips to Europe. Uh, he didn't grow that uh, famous uh, scary beard of his uh, until the last uh, 18 months of his life uh, when he had a price on his head and went underground uh, and needed to uh, disguise his identity. 
Uh, Brown also had a, a really classically American background, uh, not unlike Abe Lincoln, uh, a figure who will uh, uh, come into Brown's story uh, at the end uh, in a quite significant way. Um, he's born in 1800 in Connecticut uh, to old Yankee farming stock, uh, moves as a boy to the Ohio frontier uh, where he's educated in a log schoolhouse and goes to work young. Um, and for the first few decades, uh, this, few, uh, this future insurrectionist is really something of a conformist. Uh, he follows his father's path very closely, uh, adopting his uh, Calvinist beliefs, uh, his trade of leather tanning, um, and he marries young at his father's prompting uh, to a woman that Brown describes as remarkably plain but industrious and economical, of excellent character, earnest piety, and good practical sense. Yeah, very romantic um, <laughs> description of one's wife. I, I'm sorry I don't have a, a, a picture of her. Uh, this was a uh, uh, pre-photographic uh, days. And Brown um, is this uh, also a tremendously self-confident and ambitious man uh, who thinks big and does everything on a big scale uh, throughout his life, uh, beginning with family. Uh, he will ultimately father 20 children. Uh, and Yeah, I know. I, I complain about two. Uh, <laughs> And in the entrepreneurial spirit of the age of Jackson, uh, the 1830s, uh, he moves from farming and tanning into land speculation. He wants to get rich. He starts buying land and borrowing money and subdividing land and borrowing more and buying more until this property boom goes bust uh, in the panic of 1837. Uh, and Brown is left buried in uh, lawsuits and debt and ultimately is driven into bankruptcy uh, like thousands uh, of other Americans uh, in this era. Um, uh, this family that uh, endures uh, economic uh, hardship uh, also has repeated uh, tragedies. Uh, Brown's first wife dies young in childbirth, uh, as his own mother had done when he was only eight. And of those 20 children, he buries nine of them uh, before the age of 10. Um, and he battles back in his 40s uh, from bankruptcy and, and loss uh, to become a leading wool merchant, uh, only to once again uh, overreach um, and go bust once more. Uh, so this tremendously ambitious man uh, enters his 50s uh, really as a failure, uh, struggling to support this large family that's been through uh, so much hardship and loss. Uh, just as an aside, when he arrives here in Kansas in 1855, he has 60 cents uh, in his pocket. Uh, and this is a picture of um, his second wife, uh, Mary, and two of their young daughters. Um, I think you could say they don't look terribly happy. Uh, but this is uh, what I find uh, so remarkable about Brown. Um, uh, he has this uh, burning passion, this unbending uh, conviction that sustains him through all his Job-like trials. He's descended from Puritans and Revolutionary War soldiers, and he believes the nation's founding destiny of liberty and equality can only be fulfilled through the destruction of slavery. And he believes it's his God-given destiny to do the job. And he clings to this mission uh, for decades, quietly laying the groundwork until in his mid-50s, uh, this penniless unknown man uh, explodes onto the national scene uh, as the country's uh, leading uh, anti-slavery warrior. Uh, there's a lot that I uh, uh, find difficult about Brown. He's almost an Ahab. He's this very obsessive figure whose uh, white whale is uh, a slavery. And I hope uh, part of the suspense of reading this book is figuring out how you feel about this complicated, sometimes confounding man who pulls you one way uh, and the other. Uh, but I have to say now that I'm uh, also in my 50s, I'm very struck by his resilience and his capacity to remake himself uh, at what was then considered an advanced age. He's often referred to in his mid-50s as the old man. Um, and also uh, this willingness to take on the great moral issue of his day, despite all his worldly uh, travails. Uh, he forces you to think about your own life and what's possible. Uh, it's really a, a very American story. Oops, sorry. Uh, but Brown's uh, militant abolitionism doesn't just come out of nowhere. 
uh, he's radicalized by his times. And I think this is another uh, aspect of his story that's often misunderstood, uh, largely because of uh, Gone with the Wind, from which I've uh, taken this image. Uh, I think many Americans uh, uh, still have this uh, image of the pre-Civil War South as this doomed society, feudal and agrarian, uh, in which uh, uh, plantations and slavery